incident began when detectives observed a suspect who was wanted in connection with an armed robbery that occurred approximately 10 days ago. That suspect was observed in the area of 14th and Summit Street. And with the assistance of uniformed patrol officers, uh, detectives made contact with that subject. He was handcuffed and patted down and placed into a patrol vehicle. That subject is identified as Emmanuel Clea. During the interaction with the suspect, again, uh, officers did handcuff and search him. And he was then uh, placed in a vehicle to be brought here for interview. While en route to police headquarters, the suspect indicated that he had a firearm and was going to shoot. At that time, the officer operating the patrol vehicle immediately stopped the patrol vehicle, exited the patrol vehicle, and requested assistance from other officers. As more units arrived from not only the Sioux City Police Department, but with the Woodbury County Sheriff's Office, officers established a very secure perimeter around the vehicle and stopped all traffic flow. We also notified Hamlin High School, which is very nearby. That school went on lockdown during this time. Um, officers immediately began working to establish verbal contact with the suspect to negotiate a surrender. Negotiators were only able to get limited communication, and as the incident progressed, the suspect became more agitated. Crisis negotiations team members attempted negotiations with the suspect for approximately an hour. At that time, approximately 1,300 hours, a mixed contact team of officers approached to deliver a less than lethal chemical munition in an effort to prompt a surrender of the suspect. When approaching the patrol vehicle, officers heard shots. But under very difficult circumstances, they still delivered that chemical munition. And after doing so, shortly after, the suspect broke a window, climbed out of the window, and was safely taken into custody. He received only minor injury from that. I can tell you that a handgun was recovered in the backseat of the patrol vehicle and evidence of rounds being fired could also be seen. The handgun itself was a small caliber subcompact or what we would call a micro-compact handgun. Now the thing that's concerning about these is they are very small, they are very lightweight, and very easily concealable. So this makes searches for officers very concerning uh, under any circumstances. Uh, following this incident, we did contact the Iowa Department of Criminal Investigations. We have asked them to investigate the incident where officers were assaulted, where the suspect is believed to have fired at our officers. We, of course, will be conducting our own investigation into the beginning to the end of this incident uh, to evaluate our performance. But I can tell you that this is an incredibly frightening incident, an incredibly frightening incident, but I have to tell you that it highlights the danger uh, that our officers are in on a daily basis. And I can tell you that uh, uh, having uh, heard about what occurred, I'm incredibly proud of the officers, deputies, paramedics, firefighters, everyone that was on scene who placed themselves between our armed suspect and the public. And uh, they performed at an extremely high level situations that we want to find ourselves in, but I continue to be impressed by our staff and the cooperative effort that we have with surrounding agencies, our paramedics, etc. Now, uh, the suspect himself, uh, as soon as he was taken into custody, officers requested an ambulance. Uh, they came immediately to the scene and began evaluating him. Uh, he was taken to an area hospital and is, uh, to my knowledge, being looked at right now. Uh, some of our officers did uh, receive some minor injuries, including exposure to that chemical now, I, I will caution you that we are in the very early stages. Uh, I wanted to be very honest and upfront about what had occurred so that you have uh, a great deal of the story here, but um, my ability to answer a lot of these questions is going to be limited um, because, quite frankly, uh, we have not had a lot of time to review this. So I'll take a few questions. Rex, is he, so is he still in the hospital or is he booked in? At, at last time I heard, the suspect was still uh, being looked at. Uh, emergency room doctors wanted to make injuries, any head injuries from coming out of that vehicle. So to my knowledge, he is still receiving treatment. Do you How know is when he's released, what he's going to be held on, uh, besides, I guess, the uh, probably a past robbery charge and then whatever charges? Well, there's there's a, a number of things on the table. There's the prior charge, and then there is, of course, uh, uh, the incident that happened today. So uh, this time, we 
hasn't been charged, but I can tell you that we'll release any of that information once we determine how that individual will be charged. Obviously, we're going to be looking at uh, multiple charges here. How was the suspect handcuffed in the vehicle, and then where was his gun on his body? The suspect was hand handcuffed behind his back as to where the handgun was. That's something that's still under investigation. Can you tell? Can you say what the make and model and what caliber the gun was? I know what it is, but I'm just going to leave it at a micro compact, smaller caliber firearm. Again, what I said is uh, what's very concerning to us uh, is that uh, is these items can be less than uh, three quarters of an inch thick. They can be very light, uh, made of polymer materials, so they're highly concealable. And uh, especially in this weather, uh, heavier coats, things like that, officers just simply can't do a full body uh, search out on the street. We do the best we can. And more in-depth searches usually happen when you get to a detention facility. So uh, those are the concerning things about having weapons like that out there. Is virtually anything, even the larger firearms, can be convincingly concealed. But these small ones make our job incredibly difficult. So this gun wouldn't be more than, like, say, four or five inches in diameter, probably? You know what? Uh, knowing the model, I can tell you that uh, the, is, these firearms can be less than you think. And I can't tell you overall. Call them micro compact firearms, very small, very concealable weapons. Um, I know it'll take till the end of the investigation, Magnum, but will body cam or dash cam video be released afterwards? Or Yeah, but that's obviously part of this. We've got two pieces. We have our own review of the incident, and then we have DCI's review. Uh, to release any of this information prematurely may uh, create issues in prosecuting the suspect. Uh, we want all of this to come out. Uh, but for now, the investigation uh, takes priority. After this incident, will your search protocols change? Our search protocols have always been very thorough. You can do the best search possible and still miss mm -hmm. things. It happens, unfortunately. It's scary, uh, but it happens. Again, like I said, you can follow all protocols during a, a search out in the field and still miss things.